A continuación presentamos el devocional diario por el pastor José Manuel Sierra y traducido al inglés. En español se emite de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias y queda grabado en nuestros canales de Facebook y YouTube. Debajo en la descripción de este vídeo encontrará el enlace para los devocionales en español. Good morning, my dear brethren and friends. One, uh, welcome once uh, again to our encounter with the Lord through our daily devotional. Today we're going to be going to a precious letter that the Apostle Paul wrote. It is the letter uh, to the Thessalonians, specifically the second letter and chapter 3 of that letter as of verse 10, we find the following words. For even when we were with you, We commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busy bodies. Now those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow wearing in doing good. If there was something that the Apostle Paul was worried about and, and he dedicated a lot of time to, is to the fact that believers from his ministry, the congregations that he had founded and later had uh, left another pastor in charge, will always give a good testimony, a good example to the world, to the city, to the town, where that congregation was in. Because it was useless that they had nothing else and nothing more than Apostle Paul as the founder of the church and other collaborators like Priscilla, Aquila, Timothy, Titus, if later when he left, those congregations did not follow the instructions and the example that Paul uh, gave him to follow. The bad testimony has vaccinated thousands and thousands of people against the gospel. People who come to call themselves Christians, I don't care if they're even pastors or apostles, you know that that topic of the apostles have become very fashionable nowadays, or prophets. It is useless that those people have those positions, those uh, uh, ministries, if they are not an example. And unfortunately, we have to say that many people that today call themselves Christians, or even exercise ministerial functions, have not been an example to his congregations or to the world. That is why we often hear proverbs or expression, if this is a Christian, I'm more Christian than he or she. As a believer, you cannot simply dedicate yourself to reading the Bible, singing, going to church service, and then In, in your private life and in your public life, in your work, in the university, among your family, friends, and acquaintances, give a terrible testimony, which is what unfortunately many times have happened, and I'm afraid that it will continue to happen in the coming years. People who are religious, but people who live a double life, they're one thing when they're among the brethren, and another thing uh, when they are outside the believer's circle or nobody's watching them or listening to them. And that is what we have to take away from our congregations and from our lives. The good testimony opened many doors. It arises the interest in many people that perhaps they don't believe in the beginning, but when they see the, the good testimony of that family, of that brother, of that sister, They see they're consistent with their faith. They have left the drugs, the drinks, the bad words, and it arises in them a curiosity to find out about what has happened in their life. But rather the opposite. We know that people who have given a lousy testimony, living on paid debts, speaking ill of people, etc., etc., have caused the stumbling block of so many people that perhaps could have become interested in the gospel, in the word of God, 
But upon seeing that bad example, that bad testimony, they have decided not to attend that church or ever want to hear ever again of a Christian, of God, of his word, of a pastor. I repeat, unfortunately, this has been occurring in the past, and it continues to happen today. Throughout history, not only the Thessalonians gave a bad example, but also many Christians, even dressed with white robes, left to a special place in Israel. In Israel, it happened, by the way, that with the fact that Christ was coming soon and approaching to that date of the year 2000, they stopped working and they waited that Christ would come, that would appear in a cloud at any moment in time. And in the end, Christ did not appear. They gave a terrible testimony and later, many people facing that disappointment and that uh, uh, sadness, they abandoned the path of the Lord where they were supposedly in and they turned back, denying their faith, their God and everything. How important it is that the church, the Christians, the pastor will give a good example and a good testimony to the world. It is terrible when there are jealousy, envy, criticism among Christians. Sometimes pastors making more with other pastors because they want to be the most important pastor in the city, because they want to be the center of attention, because their pride, because they believe that their denomination is the best, that what other people do uh, is useless, only what he does is good. And we can put a lot of examples Uh, actual examples of ministers, of pastors that try to prevent that others grow, that they're not blessed or prosper. Because I repeat that they believe that they're in possession of the truth and everything else that everybody else does do is wrong. And whatever they do is right. They justify some way. Paul says that even those people that do not want to work, and how many people do not want to work? How many live off of the of, of, of the stories? And some with the excuse that they're serving the Lord, they set up an, a terrible example, not wanting to work. Or when they offer a job, they present an excuse or assist in a bad way with a bad attitude, late, and etc. Paul says that those people you shouldn't give to eat. If a person, you do not have to support a bad testimony. You have to exhort them and you have to call their attention because the bad testimony of a person in a congregation can harm the example and the testimony of other brothers and sisters that are making an effort to give a good example and a good testimony. This is something of vital importance, my dear brethren. This can make many people to be interested in the gospel or that they do not want to know anything about the gospel. Thanks to the Lord, since the days of the pandemic in those Um, months of, of since March 2020, we have been giving teachings and through the devotionals, the pastor online, the services, we have helped many people to realize that they were in places that, that more than a church, they look like a cult. People that have been hurt and manipulated, actually abusing their ministerial authority over people that they had to minister to, and what they did is to harm them and hurt them and injure them. And this came to the world through the media and they realized that not everything that is taught and is practiced and said in a church is biblical at all times. Do not be afraid to leave places. I repeat that it's more like a, a cult than an evangelical Christian church. Let's not be afraid of denouncing certain and attitudes that are not biblical, that are a product of jealousy, of envy, and so many things of the flesh. May the Lord help us, not only today, my brethren, but through our lives, wherever we are, wherever we live, to give a good testimony. Let's take our vocabulary, our way of behaving, our way to reacting in, uh, in front of what they say or do to us. Let's be separated ourselves from everything that is polluted that does not glorify the Lord so that they don't say that we're all the same. Their congregations, their churches, that they should reflect on all of these aspects that I'm commenting today. Because 
Unfortunately, it has been a long time that they strayed from the sound doctrine, and they believe that their methods and what they're sharing, preaching and teaching is correct, and they're totally wrong. Yes, maybe they obtain results because for some, having many people means to have the blessing of God, and not it's not like that all the time. Many pagan places that do not glorify the Lord, where Christ has not been invited or is the center, are a full of hundreds or thousands of people, and that does not mean that the blessing of God is there. So let's not look at the success of our ministry for what we have by the number of sheep that we have. The success, a word that I don't like to use, is measured by other issues. Let's take care of the calls that we make, the emails we send, the WhatsApp that we write, because people sooner or later will realize if we will move us is holiness, the desire to please God, or that fear that other people will be more important than me. May the Lord bless, keep us so that we can give a good testimony, not only when we meet as people of God in our temples, in our churches or homes, but when we are outside in that college, in that workplace, in that place where maybe you are the only believer, that you will be a light, that you will be a person that attracts people to the feet of Jesus and not a person that is always in a bad mood, complaining, protesting, speaking like everybody else and acting like everybody else. May the Lord keep us because this is a very important issue. It is not a proposal that the Bible is giving us. Well, behave well, give a testimony or a test or an example. It's an order, it's an, a mandate, it's an obligation on our part to represent Christ worthily, to leave him in a good place that people will say, maybe I don't believe what this man is saying, but the truth is that she or he is a person that is an example, being punctual, honest, when he is not manipulating things, taking text out of the context to form pretext, always justifying their bad attitudes in short. It's a very broad topic. And I believe we, with what I have said, we have to conclude that it is our responsibility personally. Let's not blame other people. It's something that I have to monitor in my life every day. May the Lord keep us and help us to put his word in practice. And I finish saying what the Lord says. If anyone does not want to work, well, they shouldn't eat because it is not worthy to eat when it's a person that with this bad example is discrediting the authority of the gospel and the lives of other brothers and sisters that can be harmed by the bad example or testimony that that person is giving. Let's call people to order. Let's exhort them. Let's admonish them so that they align themselves with God so that their life will be decent and, and in order, and the world can see that we are truly children of God. Let's pray this morning, presenting this day and this weekend uh, that lies ahead, so that the Lord will keep us and will uh, guide us and we can put in practice what we have learned. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this message, for this word that we have read. Help us, as always, to put it into practice that nothing disturbs the good testimony of your beloved church, that your church will be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, that those who are in a pulpit preaching your word will be examples to the great, that they will be examples to the congregation, that we will not use our influence or authority to try to harm or other ministries, other people, as it happens. We ask in the name of Jesus that you will keep us from all danger and all evil, and that you will help us to be a testimony to the world wherever you are. Forgive us for the times that perhaps we have not been that example and testimony, but we want to do things well, to please you and glorify your name. We ask everything with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. My dear brethren, thank you to all who are following us, uh, this devotional uh, the entire week. As you well know, Saturdays and Sundays, We do not have devotionals. We will be sharing the service next Sunday afternoons from Santa Cruz. 
And thank you for all who continually pray for us. We feel them and appreciate very deeply. And also thank you for all who are offering, all who are supporting this ministry so that it can continue forward. Many people ask us, how can we help? How can we send an offering? Well, in our webpage, mividanueva.org, you will be able to find in the part where it says donations, the forms, like if you wish, you don't have to do it, but if you wish, and God has placed it in your heart to support this ministry, there you have the ways that you can do so. May the Lord bless you very richly. We see you this weekend, Lord willing, in, in the service, and I wish you all the best. Let's open our hearts, let's watch over our lives, our, wherever we are, let's glorify the Lord. Blessings to all of you, my dear brethren.